As you may know, I've talked a lot about election fraud and how this primary election was stolen from Bernie Sanders in many different and exciting ways. And then last week, lawyers for the Democratic National Committee admitted in court that the DNC was biased in favor of Hillary Clinton. Of course, we already knew this from the leaked DNC emails, but admitting it in court is a whole new level. Separate from that lawsuit is another lawsuit to get the raw exit poll data, which would be the true and final word of whether Bernie Sanders actually won this primary, and more importantly, whether our system is rigged in general. Here with me now is Bob Fitrakis, one of the lawyers putting forward this lawsuit. Bob, thanks for joining me. I'm glad to be here, Lee. I really appreciate it. I uh, appreciate your work. I appreciate that you've, you know, made, made a bit of a hobby to, uh, oh, I don't know, defend our democracy in your off time. <laughs> well, you know, I, it's not built into the system. And uh, you know. the reality is that uh, in 12 of the states, uh, if they were foreign countries, our U.S. State Department would not recognize it as a valid election and we would be investigating. Right, because the State Department actually looks at exit polls in other countries, sure. right? Yeah, but it's a tool. They, they write books about it. It's through the Agency on International Development, the AID. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, uh, the gold standard, the international gold standard is the exit polls. Because people are telling you how they voted, not how they plan on, on voting. Right, right. And, and, and without those exit polls, it's kind of like we have no way to decide whether the machines gave us a legitimate count. Well, it's push and pray. It's faith-based voting. <laughs> it's faith-based. That's all, that's all you always want is some religion in your voting. voting. Um, so, so let's back up for those who haven't been following the drip, drip, drip of this thing. Um, what, what went on with the exit polls? Why did you feel the need to, to push this lawsuit? Well, uh, because uh, there's an uh, expected, uh, you know, margin of error. And what happened in, uh, in the Republican Party, all of them fell uh, within a margin of error or of no statistical significance. Right, the exit polls lined up with what the machines told us was happening. Sure, yeah, yeah. people came out and said, I voted that way. The machines countered it that way. Yeah. Uh, but in the uh, uh, Sanders-Clinton campaign, in 26 of these, 12 of them were significantly outside the margin of error. Granted, to be fair, that could happen once in every, say, 975 billion instances. <laughs> Better uh, put it in the doubt, yeah. Yeah, but they all went in one direction. Right. They all went uh, towards Hillary. And with the leaking of the DNC uh, you know, emails, it was real clear that the DNC was, in fact, interfering in that election. Right. So, so when you say they went towards Hillary Clinton, basically the exit polls say that Bernie did this well, and then the machines say, oh, no, Clinton did much better than was expected. Yeah. In Ohio, you know, Clinton was supposed to win by four points. She wins by 14. Right. Uh, and that means extra delegates uh, uh, in a lot of areas. And it wasn't simply that the vote was off. They also were stripping Bernie voters uh, from the voting rolls, particularly right. in places like California. Right. That's, uh, you know, this, this thing was manipulated in multiple ways, and, and one of them was uh, basically Bernie voters or people that are more likely to vote Bernie didn't even get the chance to vote. They're given provisional ballots. They're pushed aside in various ways. Yeah, well, yeah, we call it the strip and flip. First, you strip the Bernie voters from the voting polls, and then you make it close enough uh, where you can flip it. But in some places like you know, Arizona, you're really talking 36, 37 points uh, off. There's no way right. that that election was a coup d'etat, uh, as was California. It was not an actual election. Right. Arizona was one of the worst, where they closed, uh, you know, 70 percent of percent. polling locations in areas that are uh, more likely to be minorities, which are more likely to vote uh, Sanders. And uh, you, you mentioned flip. Well, first of all, what is what does flip mean? And uh, secondly, I see you have your book here with you uh, where you where you go through that. But what does flip mean? Well, well, flip means is that essentially you change the vote. Apparently, they, uh, we've never been willing to discuss the fact that you can program computers uh, for the <laughs> results uh, that you want. So uh, what you've got to do is get it close enough 
uh, where you can simply flip the votes. In 2004, uh, the final votes in my home state of Ohio were counted in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in the basement of the old Pioneer Bank building, alongside of Karl Rove's email on a Republican server farm. <laughs> uh, wouldn't be allowed anywhere else on earth, just the United States. And you mentioned Karl Rove, which I don't want to go too far into the history because we don't have the time, but, uh, you know, he played a pivotal role in some of these past elections. And we just, uh, you know, my correspondent, Jonathan O'Donnell, was just at the presidential debate where you see him laughing buddy-buddy with Donna Brazile, the current head oh, of sure. the DNC. And the fact that these people are buddies, shouldn't that be <laughs> problematic? Well, you know, it's uh, obviously it's problematic, and uh, you know, Mary, Mary Matlin being married to James Carville. Uh, yeah, these political operatives, and I've talked to I, I, General West Clark had one, and when I told him I think they flipped the vote here, he was saying I would have done the same thing if I had the technology. Right. Uh, it's almost all a big game. Um, you know, with, with this with this primary election. Uh, I, I don't know, like, what, my analogy for these voting machines where we can't see into them, it, it kind of amazes me because it's basically like, what if the last 10 minutes of the Super Bowl were done, performed, played in a black site that no one could see, and then a ref just walked out and said, hey, everybody, I watched it, Cowboys okay. won. Would the, 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 U, the U.S. would be on fire. People would be, sure. what do you mean they won? What, prove it. And, and worse than that, if the people that they allow to select the audience in and ask them, how it really happened, and they all came out and said, well, the Cowboys won, uh, the Redskins lost, uh, and the refs announced the exact opposite. Right, right. And, and uh, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, they won by 37 points, and then they go, uh, no, the Redskins really won by 14. Right, and, you know, people would be furious, yet because it's our presidential election, it seems like people are okay with the fact that we cannot see the technology in, inside these computers. Yeah, wh why would you allow partisan for-profit corporations to secretly count your vote with proprietary software. You've handed them the, key, uh, the keys to the kingdom. Right. And then they sit down and go, oh, maybe the Russians are doing something. To me, that's like a sophisticated, uh, elite, all-white security force that's coming into your home and robbing you. And then occasionally they shout, oh, some black people just walked by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, they are trying to, uh, well, okay, let me back up there. They're now saying, oh, our election, the general election, could be hacked. And you, I, I showed a, recently showed a CBS News report where they talked about how easy it is to hack these machines. They showed a guy in there who, who was hacking it with a $15 device he said sure. he bought on Amazon. So all of a sudden, some of the mainstream media are doing these reports on how easily our system could be hacked. But during the primary where you or I were saying, hey, this is being, this is being rigged, they said, no, 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 it's, you're a conspiracy theorist, this could right. never happen. What changed? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, what changed is actually uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, said something and a lot of the key operatives uh, uh, began to say, you know, the, there's private companies there. And for the first time, uh, it was so blatant. Uh, you know, I mean, apologies are owed the Bush family. The Bush family kind of always brought a sophisticated CIA kind of vote flipping <laughs> to the process. <laughs> but, you know, the Clintons were new at it, and they were just flat out stealing anything they uh, could because Bernie was so powerful. Right, the 100,000 knocked off the rolls in Brooklyn alone. That yeah, was pretty I mean, obvious. Everything was blatant. Sure, you, yeah. you target using the meta and mega data who the base uh, uh, of the Sanders supporters are, and you simply strip them blatantly and publicly from the rolls. So let's get into this uh, current lawsuit. Uh, what is it that you are hoping to get from Edison Research, which I don't know if we've mentioned them, but they're the only exit polls going now. Right? Yeah, they're a monopoly. They're, uh, we're totally reliant on their numbers, which uh, they go against the ethical principles uh, of exit polling and pollsters in general. They won't, uh, they won't release their uh, uh, adjusted data. We don't want their formulas. We want to know what people are telling them. Instead, it's based on the assumption that the machines must be right. right. So even if they're 37 points off in Arizona or are uh, 10 points off uh, in Ohio, we assume that this impossible vote count, the impo we, we wipe out whole groups of young people and say, well, they must not have voted. Uh, 
that, that's what this is about. And they're working for a media cartel, uh, the four broadcast channels, CNN and AP. So there's a small group of six in a media cartel telling you there's nothing to worry about. The bizarre assumption that goes against all social science is they assume they never question the machinery. Right. When the machinery's off, you know, by, you know, a billion to one, they'll say, well, it must be accurate. And they'll simply adjust to an incredibly implausible, statistically impossible number. Right. They take, they take the exit polls, and then before they reveal the final exit polls, they adjust them with the machine. They add the machine vote into the calculation, which the whole point of exit polls is they're not the machine vote. They're supposed to tell yeah. us whether the machines were right. Yeah, uh, having a PhD in political science is his mister. The first thing, if the numbers, if people say one thing and the numbers are wrong, you look at the history, that was there some historical uh, intervention, burning in a huge sex scandal, something right. to explain it. But number two is I, it's his mister. The I is instrumentation. The next thing you do when your numbers are that bad, you ask whether or not the instrumentation is actually counting right. And then when you look at it and it's easily hackable and all sorts of private companies have written secret software for the central tabulators, and the computer machines, right there, you should impound those machines, get yellow police tape, <laughs> and say it's a crime scene. Right. Bring, bring in uh, forensic computer experts. Some chalk outlines on the yeah, ground. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so where, if your lawsuit were successful, what they would, what, have to, re have to reveal the, uh, the raw data? Absolutely. And then we can see whether they're the most incompetent pollsters on planet <laughs> yeah. Earth or they're simply uh, working with a cartel and uh, giving us the candidate, whoever the oligarchs want. And, and one of the ways that basically corporations and the, the ruling elite have been able to game our criminal justice system is by uh, just flooding it with money. They, they make it impossible mm -hmm. for smaller people to uh, sue them because they, you can't afford the, the trials and everything. So is, is that what they're hoping for here? Well, uh, a couple of the voting machine companies actually donated to the Clinton Foundation, uh -huh. uh, which is bizarre. Uh, Dominion, for one, and uh, Hig, which uh, owns Hard Inner Civic, the third largest, which was bought by, uh, again, friends of, in Bain Company of Mitt Romney. Just prior to him running for president, he bought the third largest voting machine company in America. But he got a good deal. There were 12 elements of security. The one they bought, Hard Inner Civic, failed all 12 areas. Yes, well, speaking of failed machines, uh, there was a lot of uh, great math done by people far, far smarter than me that showed that Hillary did much better in areas that failed the hacking machines. I mean, the machines <laughs> failed the hacking tests and uh, no paper trail. Sure, the, where uh, she did the best. Yeah, where, where her numbers are most implausible and where she did the best is where the machines were the most insecure and where you couldn't verify whether the vote count was correct. Uh, at all. Uh, where, where Bernie did well is where there was actual paper, right. you know, scanned ballots and or in caucuses. And that was done by uh, two graduate uh, students, one from Stanford. Right, right. Um, so how can people, I know this is infuriating people, I get emails all the time, I'm sure you do, people want <laughs> to help out. How, how can they help you? How can they, is there anything they can do, um, either volunteering or, or donating or? Yeah, uh, they need to go to Trust Vote. Mm -hmm. uh, we're putting together a volunteer That's trust list. Org. Uh, trustvote .org. Yeah. org. It's a nonprofit. They can donate there, but they can also donate their time and uh, and skills. Uh, and if we need occasionally, uh, if they blatantly steal the election, we may have to occupy a few of these crime scenes. Right. So whatever you want to do, uh, write letters, go to public meetings, donate money, uh, go to trustvote org. Okay. Well, well, that's great. Uh, what f final question, and you know maybe maybe sugarcoat it a little. What what's the uh, what's the odds of this uh, lawsuit working? Well, uh, I think that if a lot of people uh, move forward uh, and we get one brave judge, mm -hmm. uh, you know the discovery. Uh, I think they'll cave because they're going against their own uh, ethics, uh, and it's so blatant. There's a rule of justice that says that. The court should fashion a solution. All they got to do is what they've ethically pledged to do and wow. let us see uh, the unadjusted data. 
And, and at the very least, even if we never are able to get the raw data for the primaries, at least maybe we can, moving forward, have a much more reliable system. Maybe people will right. demand that, you know? Well, I'll leave you with this. Yeah. Uh, most of the, a lot of these machines actually have audit features built into them, including electronic uh, ballot imaging, is that they're all being turned off. Uh -huh. uh, in Ohio and Cleveland, we could actually have the real ballot images scanned so we wouldn't need their adjusted polls. Wow. Uh, uh, they keep claiming uh, it's human error. They keep turning off the audit logs. Make them turn on the audit logs. It's funny how a lot of human error is going around, isn't it? Uh, Bob, Bob Rodriguez, so, thank you so much for your work oh, and for coming in. I oh, appreciate I appreciate it. your time. You're doing a great job on this issue. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bob.